Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on the analogies between acoustical, mechanical and electrical phenomena. We'll begin by noting that there are many similarities between mechanical and electrical wave propagation. We can exploit these similarities to simplify learning by being able to extend principles learnt in one domain to the other. We'll begin by looking at our basic variables, and in each domain we have a source of force and a source of flow. In the electrical domain, we note that voltage is sometimes referred to as electromotive force, and a flow of charged particles is a current. Mechanically, we have force directly, and our source of flow is particle velocity. There are a number of components with similarities between one domain and the other. We'll start by considering in the electrical domain an inductor. Here, the voltage across an inductor is given by L dI dt. If we look at a mass, we note from Newton's second law that force is mass times acceleration. However, acceleration is not one of our basic variables defined earlier, and we should therefore express acceleration as being dV dt. So in this case, we notice that the source of force is a constant times the time differential of the source of flow, and that applies in both domains. Now let's consider another component pair. In the electrical world, we have the relationship between voltage and current given by Ohm's law. When we look at a dash pot mechanically, we find that the force is related to viscosity and the velocity which the dash pot is experiencing. So here we have a purely linear relationship between the source of force and source of flow. And the last component pair considers electrically a capacitor, wherein we note that the voltage is one over the capacitance times the time integral of current. And in a spring, when we have force is minus the spring constant, times the extension. However, once again, displacement and extension are not our principal variables, so we can convert that to being the integral of V dt. So now we have our source of force being a constant times the time integral of our source of flow. There are similar analogies with derived variables. Consider here power and impedance. In the electrical scenario, power is the product of voltage and current, and the impedance is the ratio of the two. Mechanically, the same relationship exists, so power is the source of force multiplied by the source of flow, and the mechanical impedance is their ratio. Note thus far that we've talked about many mechanical quantities, but quite often we're interested in acoustic quantities. And so we recall that pressure is simply defined as force divided by area. Consequently, a mechanical quantity and an acoustical quantity can be related simply by dividing by area. So if we look at power is force times velocity mechanically, if we divide both sides by area, we end up with intensity being pressure times particle velocity. And the mechanical impedance, which is force divided by particle velocity, becomes, in an acoustic sense, pressure divided by particle velocity. We'll also look at various impedances. So instantaneous acoustic impedance is the instantaneous pressure divided by instantaneous particle velocity. And here we note that we're dependent on both the position vector and the time for these instantaneous quantities. But we may also be interested in characteristic acoustic impedance, Z0. And this is the product of our speed of sound and density. Now let's consider what happens with reflection and transmission phenomena. 
If we consider a wave in medium 1, incident towards an interface with medium 2. As it encounters this interface, there may be some reflection, and the magnitude of that is given by the difference of the characteristic acoustic impedances divided by their sum. There may also be partial transmission, and the transmission coefficient is given by twice the transmitting medium impedance over the sum of the two impedances. Now these are expressed in terms of pressure quantities, but we could equally consider impedance quantities. In this case, the expressions for the reflection coefficient in impedance terms and the transmission coefficient in impedance terms are also given. But note, these are exactly the same form as one would find in optics. Similarly, if we look at refraction and Snell's law, as long as we express Snell's law in terms of speeds of sound or speeds of light or speeds of electromagnetic waves rather than refractive indices, we note that we've got a very similar arrangement again. So in this case, when we have an incident wave at theta 1 and a refracted wave at theta 2, Snell's law tells us that sine of the angle over the wave speed is equal on both sides. This again is exactly what we see in optics. So to summarise then, we note that with the many similarities between mechanical and electrical EM wave propagation, we only need to learn one set of principles and apply it to both. We hope you found this tutorial video interesting. If you have, come back and find some more of the Precision Acoustics tutorial videos.